Okay, so we are in the fourth week of the physically based animation class. Yeah, today we will learn about kinematics. Uh, this is the last part of kinematics. Next next week we will learn something new. Yeah. So after um, from the previous two weeks, you have learned about KLP or a linear motion with uniform velocity. KLPP, uniform motion with Oh, sorry, not uniform motion. A linear motion with a uniform acceleration, yeah, to, to the x-axis and KJP or free fall motion, yeah, which is actually a KLPP in y-axis. Yeah, now we will combine KLP and KLPP into one uniform motion, which is called projectile motion or parabolic motion. Yeah, uh, in bahasa we know it as gerak parabola or gerak peluru. Yeah, we will call it um, projectile motion for for today. <coughs> okay, so a uh, projectile motion or a gerak parabola is actually a combination of KLP in the x-axis as well as KLPP in the y-axis. Yeah, for example, you can observe here uh, we have angry birds. Yeah, if I pull uh, my birds from the catapult and then uh, I release it, then my bird will go along a um, projectile or parabolic trajectory. Yeah, and again, we must assume that there are no forces um, involved in this motion. Yeah, although some says that gravity is a force, yeah, but that's it. Yeah, we don't have any other forces in this system, so we will ignore, for example, like. Uh, the air drag. Yeah, we will assume that there is no air drag at all. So, a uh, projectile motion is actually motion in the x-axis, and it is independent from the motion on the y-axis. Yeah. So now we work in two-dimensional. We work now in x-axis and y-axis at the same time. Yeah. So if I have a v naught, which is the initial velocity, and yeah, now we have two components. One is v not x, yeah, the initial velocity to the x-axis, and v not y, the initial velocity to the y-axis. Yeah, for every um, factor here, uh, we only have v for now. Yeah, we we have two components also. For example, like v in a, yeah, v a, we have v a to the x-axis, v a x, and v a to the y-axis, v a y. Yeah, and so on. Uh, we can observe them independent, independently. Yeah, so we can use the KLP on x-axis and KLPP to the y-axis. Yeah, and uh, we will observe some interesting cases. Yeah, like here in B. Yeah, we have uh, this object on the highest position, on the highest height. Yeah, here. Uh, it is denoted by y max. Yeah. Uh, sometimes people use the notation of h max. Yeah. H stands for height. And also we will observe a special case here. Yeah. At point D. Yeah. Where this is actually the furthest uh, the object can uh, move from point zero to point D. Yeah. Uh, the maximum distance or Maximum displacement. Yeah, but let's take a look from the initial velocity first. Yeah, because the object is moving in a projectile motion, uh, it has an initial velocity of v naught. Usually, we will know the throw angle here, denoted by alpha, or sometimes people use theta, or any uh, Greek letters. Yeah, then we can calculate its component of v naught in the x-axis and y-axis respectively by using a simple trigonometry. Yeah, so if you observe here, <coughs> usually in the problems to be calculated yeah, later, you will be given v naught and alpha. Yeah, then you can calculate v naught x and v naught y yeah, by using simple trigonometry. Yeah, just remember x is cos and y is sin. So v naught x is v naught times cos uh, theta 
and for the phi naught y is uh, phi naught times sin theta. And then let's observe about the acceleration for the projectile motion. In the x-axis, remember, uh, in x-axis we observe KLB, so there is no change in the velocity, means uh, there is no acceleration. But in the y-axis, because it is a KLBB, or actually, um, oh no, we cannot say it as free fall motion, yeah, because actually now our VY, yeah, the V not Y, the initial velocity for the x-axis is actually going upwards, yeah. so it is uh, positive. Yeah, but after it reaches the maximum height, then it will uh, perform a free fall motion in the y-axis. Yeah, but let's just say that in the y-axis we observe KLBB, so we have an acceleration to the y-axis, and the value uh, is actually the same as the Earth's gravity. Yeah, so if I break down the acceleration for a projectile motion, I can say that the acceleration to the y-axis is zero, but the acceleration in the y-axis is the same as gy, uh, which means it is uh, equal to negative 9.8. For the current velocity, we can uh, use the same formula from KLP and KLPP. Yeah, uh, just remember that x is KLP, y is KLPP. So given any time t, we can calculate current velocity with the yeah, KLP and KLPP formula. Thus, Vx is V0x, yeah, there is no change. And Vy is V0y plus Ay times t. For the current displacement, we can do it similarly. Yeah, we can calculate the displacement regarding to both axes. For the x-axis, sx or dx, yeah, sx equals to v0x times t. Yeah, remember, because v, v t, uh, sorry, vx is equal to v0x. Meanwhile, for the y-axis, yeah, sy equals to v0y times t plus a half of ay times t squared. Yeah, that's all we need to know, but we will observe two special cases, yeah, first uh, in the highest position, and then the second is in the furthest position. Yeah, we will observe the first case first, yeah, uh, it is the maximum height. At the maximum height, the object momentarily stops moving in the y-axis, yeah, so at this very moment, uh, we say that the velocity to the y-axis equals to zero. Yeah, uh, with this knowledge, we can calculate time for the maximum height. Uh, we will denote it as uh, th max. Yeah, let's just uh, solve the equation regarding its velocity in the y-axis, and we remember that at the maximum height, phi y is zero. Yeah, so let's plug in everything. Yeah, we have V. I'm oh, sorry, I will use uh, black ink. <laughs> hey, yeah. Okay, then we have V y equals to V not y. Luki is asking to accept. Mm, actually, we don't. We don't really need to accept. Wait, let me see. Uh, usually, if you use Guaya, then you don't really need to wait for the, per the permission to enter here. So, can you ask Lu Lukita to use his Guaya instead? I think he, he is locked in using uh, his Gmail. If using Gmail, then yes, the host of this uh, meeting should accept. Yeah, maybe Kenneth, can you possibly accept him? Uh, yes, sir. Hold on. 
Sorry, I'm good, though. Okay, that's fine, Duki. Okay. Oh, you are using your Gua, yeah. So, uh, why did you need permission then, yeah? Uh, actually, I'm pretty much confused with Google Link, so. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's fine then. Okay, so, yeah, for Luki, uh, we are discussing about a projectile motion today. Yeah, so uh, we have, com we will combine KLP and KLPP into a projectile motion. Yeah, um, for the initial part, uh, you can refer to the video later, yeah. Uh, we are calculating for the time at the maximum height, which is th max. Yeah, we must solve the equation uh, regarding to the velocity in the y-axis with the knowledge that vy equals to zero. So, uh, remembering that in the y-axis, uh, we have a KLPP. Yeah, let's just use the KLPP formula. Vy equals to v not y plus a in the y direction and t. Uh, here I will denote t as th max. Now let's plug in uh, vy is 0. We have v not y as it is plus ay ay times th max. So here we get that th max equals to negative v not y divided by a y yeah so we get uh, this equation th max equals to negative v not y uh, divided by a y or you can expand it the yeah, negative v not sin theta over a y yeah maybe in your uh, high school yeah, your teacher gave you this formula instead. V not times sin theta over G. Yeah, it is actually the same. Yeah, considering that G here equals to 10 meter per second square. Yeah, later if you use uh, this formula, Yeah, if you use this formula, if you plug in a y as negative 10, then the negatives will actually cancel out. So uh, you will get the same result as this. Yeah, so don't worry. Okay. So we know that the time for the maximum height is something like this. Yeah, to, oh, sorry. So to calculate the maximum height itself, yeah, to find out the maximum height, uh, let's solve the equation regarding its displacement on the y-axis. H max equals to v not y times the h max plus a half of a y times the h max squared. Yeah, let's derive this or let's solve this equation. Yeah, if we do it correctly, we will get this equation. Yeah, h max equals to negative v not square times uh, sin uh, sin theta squared over 2 times ay. <coughs> Let's do the calculation. Yeah, we have the h max equals to v not y times the h max plus a half of ay time th max squared. Yeah, plug in everything. Uh, I want expand v not y first because I have th max is actually still v not y. Yeah, times negative v not y over a y plus a half of a y times negative v not y over a y then square okay let's solve this i have a v a negative v not y square over a y plus
uh, let's do it slowly. Yeah? A half of a y times, if we square this, then we get, um, let's see, v not y squared over a y squared. Okay, let's um, simplify. Yeah, here uh, we can eliminate the ay one. Yeah, and then let's see. I have negative v not y here. Negative v not y over ay. Yeah, and then uh, I will bring the half to the upper side. Yeah, so I have a half of v not y squared over ay we will get negative v not y squared yeah i forgot the squared here so we have a negative v not y plus a half of v not y we get negative v not y over Ay, or as stated in the slide, yeah, I can write it h max equals to negative p not y. Oh, I run out of space over 2 ay, or we can expand it to uh, this is squared, yeah, squared. Uh, we can expand it to v not sin theta but this r squared still divided by 2 ay then we will get phi not squared sin squared theta over 2 a Okay, let's see. Okay, we have h max equals to negative v not square uh, sine theta square sine of the theta then squared yeah uh, divided by two a y yeah it's correct yeah so uh, you can use this formula negative v not squared sine squared uh, theta over two a y or you can use this one negative v not y squared divided by 2a y yeah let me uh, tidy this up it is a uh, v not y yeah uh, either formula can be used yeah it's up to you yeah usually uh, at the beginning of um, solving any problems, yeah, you will calculate v not y and v not x first. Yeah, so if you are asked to calculate x max, then uh, you can use this instead of this. Yeah, because uh, anyway, you have calculated v not y, and we know that v not y is actually uh, v not times sine of theta. Yeah, so you don't need to calculate sine theta, then square it. Okay, this is about the maximum height. Um, any questions so far? Uh, I guess not that, yeah. And don't worry, uh, on your exam, you don't really need to derive uh, this equation. Yeah, You can just uh, use it as it is. Yeah, either you you want to use this one, yeah, uh, as provided in the slide, or you can use the sim simple one, yeah, negative v not y squared over 2ay. Yeah, it's up to you. Okay, then uh, the next special case is at 
this point yeah uh, this is uh, the maximum displacement or d max yeah first we must assume that we throw the object at the y equals to zero yeah if somehow uh, we throw the object at some height yeah y does not equal to zero then uh, we can say that the uh, maximum displacement is where uh, the y is equal to the initial height yeah but to simplify everything we will assume that the initial position of the object is y equals to zero yeah then uh, we can say that the object will have its maximum displacement in the x-axis when y is also uh, go back to zero yeah so here uh, when we throw it y equals to zero then when in uh, lands on the ground yeah y is again equal to zero okay uh, using simil the similar concept as the maximum height let's calculate the time for the maximum displacement first yeah we will use the, the notation td max yeah how to calculate this uh, we can just solve the equation for this one yeah zero equals to v naught y times tt max plus a half of a y tt max squared yeah let's do this okay yeah the second case is when the y equals to zero When y equals to zero, then we uh, can calculate for tt max by using the equation. Yeah, actually, the equation is this: uh, t for y. Yeah, and actually, it's the t max, but uh, we observe the dy first. Dy is actually uh, phi not y times t yeah, t max uh, 10 plus a uh, half of a y times t t max squared because we know that y is 0 yeah we can uh, put it like this times t t max plus a uh, half of a y times t t max squared yeah because the left hand side is zero i can safely divide this equation by t t max so i'll get zero equals to phi naught y plus a uh, half of a y uh, times t t max so i get t t max equals to negative v not y divided by a half of a y which equals to negative 2 v not y over a y yeah, you get the same thing. T T max equals to negative T V not Y over A Y. Yeah, feels like something similar. Actually, yes. Yeah, let me uh, put this equation. Yeah, if you remember when we calculated T. Oh, where is it? Oh, over here. When we calculate th max, we get negative v not y over a y. Yeah, now tt max is actually negative two v not y over a y. So actually, these two times are related. Yeah, you will notice that the time it takes to reach the maximum displacement is exactly twice the time it takes to reach the maximum height. Yeah, so simply put, tt max equals to twice the th max yeah so if you uh, you have calculated th max then you you will be able to get tt max simply by 
multiplying by two, by two. Yeah, and then again for the maximum displacement, yeah, uh, we can calculate it on the x-axis. Yeah, because on the y-axis the displacement is zero. Yeah, the maximum displacement in the x-axis is uh, can be calculated by using KLP. Yeah, normal KLP. Remember that the max is uh, v, Vx times the dmax. So we have here dmax equals to Vx times t for the d, d max. Uh, it, it should be a name. T d max. And remember, because this one is KLP, then we have Vx equals to V not X. Yeah, we can expand this equation then. V not X times, yeah, put this one, negative 2 V not Y over A. Y. Yeah, if you have calculated uh, Vx and Td max, yeah, uh, it should be easy enough for you to solve this uh, or calculate for the max. Yeah, because you have Vx, which you have calculated before, v not x and v not uh, Td max is this one. Yeah, if you not y, you should have calculated it. Yeah, when you know phi not, then uh, you can simply just use this equation. Yeah, but I'll show you uh, how we get this. Yeah, maybe on um on the high school you get this one instead. Yeah, phi not square sine two theta divided by a y yeah it's simply um by solving this equation actually yeah if we go on then uh, we can expand phi not x to phi not times cos theta yeah then uh, i will divide everything by a y later yeah times negative two of V naught sine theta. Everything is divided by a y. Yeah, and then we will get something like this. I will put the negative two outside. Oh, sorry, uh, I will put the negative v naught square outside. Negative v naught square. Yeah, and I will deliberately put uh, two sine theta beside the cos theta. Then uh, everything is divided by a y. Now um, this is a special case in the trigonometry. Yeah, if you remember from your high school uh, trigonometry, then we have. This actually equals to sine of 2 theta. Yeah, then uh, you can expand it or simplify it yeah, actually. Uh, you will get negative phi naught square times sine 2 theta over a y. Yeah, that's how you get this equation yeah but remember that uh, if you know exactly how parabolic motion works yeah remember in the x-axis uh, there is klpp happening yeah, and in the y-axis you have klpp yeah then actually you can simply use uh, the basic formula for klp and klpp yeah so instead of doing um quite complex trigonometry like this 
Yeah, you must calculate sine 2 theta. Although, yeah, you have calculator or Excel or you can ask Google, yeah. But you can avoid this by just using the KLP formula. Yeah, so in short, you don't really need to memorize all the equations for the projectile motion. Yeah, you just uh, need to memorize that in the x-axis, you get KLP or constant velocity. And in the y-axis, you get KLPB or constant acceleration. Yeah, then uh, you can work out for the equations by yourself. Yeah, even though actually uh, later in the midterm exam, yeah, it is open book, so you don't really need to memorize everything. Yeah, the, uh, you can always refer to the slides for uh, the formula. Okay, any questions? Uh, not yet, sir. Not yet, yeah. yeah I think because it's only... Uh, deriving the equations yeah, on or the formula. So let's do some real world equation then or real world problem. Yeah, let's solve this one. Let's say that I have some one case of soccer ball with an angle of 37 degree with the initial velocity of 20 meter per second. Yeah, we are. Um, mm -hmm. Can you give us the formula, sir? Okay. Uh, which one? Uh, sorry, maybe I should just open my PPT, so. Oh, okay. I, I haven't opened it. <laughs> okay, yeah, just open your PPT, yeah. Okay, uh, let's do this first problem. Yeah, then uh, I will give you some problems later to work on, yeah. Uh, let's discuss this one first. Okay, I will put it... Oh, well, over here. In the problem, it states that we have someone uh, throw a ball. Let's say that this is a ball. Or kicks, yeah, actually. Uh, someone kicks a ball with the initial velocity of 20 meter per second with an angle of 37 degrees. So the angle is 37. Yeah, before we solve A, B, and so on, uh, let's just derive uh, what we know so far. Yeah, we know that the V0, or the initial velocity, is this. Yeah, then uh, we can calculate uh, its components for V0. Yeah, we have V0 X and V0 Y. For V not x, it's uh, 20 times cosine of 37. For V not y, it's 20 times sine of 37. Yeah, 20 times sine 37 is, let's see, 12. And this one should be 16. Uh, although if you use calculator, then uh, you will get uh, decimal points. Yeah, Here I oversimplify uh, my cal calculation because I know that sine 37 is actually uh, 0 0.6. Yeah, so if you remember uh, from your high school, uh, we have a shortcut here when the angle is 37 yes yeah, sine 37 is 3 over 5 3 fifth and cosine of 37 is actually 4 fifth yeah but if you use calculator then you will get 37 uh, sine is 0 0.6018 yeah, it's not really 3 over 5. Yeah, but here I simplify the calculation. And
and I will use t equals to negative 10 instead. Yeah. Oh yeah, uh, by the way, uh, if you use calculator, please make sure that your unit for your angle is actually degree. Yeah. Be careful, don't change it to radian. Make sure that you use degree here. If you use calculator, maybe Windows calculator or your own uh, physical calculator, yeah? the scientific one. If you use Google, then you must explicitly state that you want to use the degree instead of radian. Because if you uh, ask Google sign of 60, you will get negative 0 0.3048. Yeah, because in for um, most programs, yeah, either sine, cosine, and so on, they work in uh, using radians instead of degree. Yeah, so remember, you must explicitly ask degree. And you will get 0 0.86, oh, sorry, huh? why I use 60? <laughs> Yeah, sine 37 is 0 0.6018, the same, yeah? Uh, if you use Excel later, I think uh, they also work in Radian, yeah, please check um, Excel or Google Sheet, yeah? Please check the documentation. Okay, now that we know uh, phi not x and phi not y, we can calculate or solve the first problem a calculate x its maximum height so we are asked to calculate h x oops yeah to do this uh, you must know the time first yeah t h max equals to Okay, let me take a look from here. Yeah, negative 2, uh, sorry, not negative 2, negative phi not y. Negative phi not y over a y. And for simplicity, let's use a as 0 and negative 10 instead of negative 9.8, yeah. Okay, let's plug in everything here. So I get the h max equals to negative phi not y is 12. I'll put meter per second here. Divided by negative 10, I get 1.2. Yeah, then uh, you can plug in for the h max equals to phi not y times t h max plus a half of a y times t h max squared. Yeah, plug the value 12 times 1.2 plus a half of negative 10 times 1.2 squared. I get, hmm, I guess 14.4. Um, oh, well. I just use calculator for this one. Yeah? Let's see. 5 times 1.44 oh oh I have 7.2 plus negative 7.2 we get 7.2 meter yeah this is the first uh, way to actually solve the equation 
yeah if you can't remember uh, the equation for h max which is this one yeah but if you want you can also use the h max which oh, where is it yeah this one you can use h max equals to negative v not y squared over 2ay yeah let's try to use this negative v not y squared or yeah you can uh, immediately calculate h max negative v not y squared over 2ay which is negative 12 squared over 2 times negative 10 we get 144 divided by 20 you will get the same result yeah? 7.2 meter yeah so as you can see here uh, you can do either way yeah, you can calculate x max by um the longer the longer way yeah you must calculate the s max first then calculate the s max using simple uh, klpp formula or you can use the derived formula and you will get immediately the result yeah in your midterm exam uh, i will not only check your final answer yeah but uh, i will also check how you get the final answer yeah so later uh, please don't forget to write down the formula first and then some steps of your equation yeah uh, maybe for the first step is fine yeah so i will require you to write down this then at least the first step of your equation uh, plug in the numbers and then you can skip immediately to the answer Yeah, we will discuss this uh, later on how to actually answer your midterm exam later. Yeah, I think uh, we will discuss it on the seventh week. Okay, so any questions for this A first for calculating its max? No, sir. Not yet, yeah, Gabriel. Yeah, so um, so far, uh, it's only a matter of using the correct formula and plug in the correct value. Yeah, if you do it correctly, then you will get the correct answer. Okay, for P, how much time it takes to land on the ground? So what should I calculate for P actually? How much time it takes to land on the ground? Yeah, when uh, when does the ball actually land? Yeah, if I give you this uh, image, then how long does it take for my object from here to actually land back to the ground? It's at the maximum displacement, right? Yeah, so for P, you are required to calculate T for max yeah how to calculate the d max yeah it, it depends on how you answer a actually yeah if you 
Now calculate the H max first, then this will be very easy for you. Yeah, because we know that TD max is twice of TH max equals to 2 times uh, 1.2. 1.2 is 2.4 second. Yeah, however, if you uh, don't calculate the H max at A, then just use the equation over here. Yeah, negative 2 V not Y over AY. Yeah, let's prove if they are actually the same. Negative 2 V not Y over AY, which is negative 2 times 12 divided by negative 10. The same, yeah, you will get 2.4. Okay, again, see how far the kick is when it lands. So, what should we calculate for C? So yeah, see how far the kick is when it lands. So, uh, what should we calculate for C? Um, is it D max, sir? Yes, it is actually D max. Yeah, why D max? Because here it says that we must calculate how far the kick is when it lands. Yeah, if you remember the graphic. Yeah, so here, uh, as can be seen in this picture, yeah, it lands when uh, y equals to 0, and it is stated that the object will have its maximum displacement. Yeah, maximum displacement here is d max. So for c, we must calculate d max. Yeah, again, there are many ways to calculate d max. If you use KLPP, it's very simple then, because we already knew the D max. Yeah, by using KLP, we have D max equals to Vx times T D max. Vx we know uh, equals to V not x, which is um, sixteen if I'm not mistaken, times two point four. It's Oh well, let's use calculator. 16 times 2.4 38.4 meter 38.4 meter Yeah, it's simple. You, you can use this formula to actually solve 40 max. Yeah, you don't really need to use this one. If you want, you, you can, of course. Yeah, let's try. Uh, negative V not square sine 2 theta over AY. Yeah, or T max equals to negative V not square sine 2 theta over AY. Uh, is there a 2? Oh, no. Yeah, and then uh, let's plug in everything. Uh, phi naught is 20 squared. Sine 2 times 37 degree over negative 10. Uh, we have 400. Sine 37 times 2 is 74. Yeah? 74 divided by 10. Uh, we have 40 sine 74 
40 times. Oops, sorry. 74 sine 0 0.9612. Which is, let's see, if I multiply this by 40, ayo, I'll get 38.45 roughly. Yeah, as you can see here, we uh, we have uh, quite a similar result, yeah. Uh, it only differs by 0 0.05, yeah. It's still okay. Yeah, later in the midterm exam, uh, I will use um, roughly two point of decimal precision. Yeah, so if you are, your answer still, uh, your answer differs in the second digit, then uh, I will still regard it as being correct. Yeah, so if the answer is 38.4, but you get 38.45, then it's okay. Okay, for A, B, and C, any questions maybe? Not yet. Yeah, it's only a matter of using the correct formula and correct value, yeah, for A, B, and C. Now, 40. Calculate its velocity at the maximum height. T. Yeah, please calculate the velocity at its max. Yeah, please tell me the value of Vx and Vy. Yeah, anyone wants to answer this? You should be able to answer this uh, Vx and Vy without using any calculation at all, actually. Yeah, again, I will give you some clue. Um, is it zero, sir? Uh, which one? Uh, because it's in the ground, is it? No, it is actually in the maximum height, not in the ground. The Vy, sir. Oh, Vy is zero. Why, Gabriel? Uh, uh, as far as I know, when the object reached the highest height mm -hmm. the uh, speed or the fee will be zero oh yeah i just remember so the ice mean it's mean zero right yeah yeah as you remember over here oh where is it yeah oh this one yeah it is uh, observed that at the highest height yeah, the, at the maximum height, the velocity in the y direction is actually zero. Yeah, it stops momentarily. Yeah, that's why for the y component of this v, it's zero. What about the vx? Yeah, this one uh, you may need to perform some calculation, but we have done it already, actually. Yeah, what is the correct value for Vx?
Yeah, remember that in the x-axis we observe a KLP. Yeah, so uh, what values we have so far regarding to the x-axis? From what we know so far, we have T max, we have T T max, we have H max, uh, we have T H max, and we have V not x as well as V not uh, y. Is it D max divided by T D max? T max divided by T D max. Mm, no, because uh, we are observing at the maximum height. At the maximum height, the displacement is actually only half. Any other um, cases, maybe? I cannot forget most of it, so. Okay. <laughs> this is only two years ago, so. Okay. Uh, I'll give you an uh, actually uh, it is a clue I have given you already. Uh, remember that in KLP. Yeah, well, what is the meaning of KLP actually? With regard to its velocity. If an object moves in a linear motion by KLP, that means that. Um, the speed is constant. So. The speed is constant. Okay. Yeah. Now use the knowledge to determine the velocity in the x direction at its maximum height. If the speed of the or the velocity is constant, then v x equals to. Mm. 16. 16. Uh, how did you get 16? Uh, v not x. Sir. Yeah, v not x. Yeah. So, Gabriel, you are correct. Yeah, remember, because we observe KLP, it means that Vx equals to v not x, which is 16. Yeah, we have already calculated this at the very start of uh, solving this problem. Yeah, that's why I said uh, you don't really need to calculate anything to answer D. Yeah, so the V at its max is 16 and 0. Yeah, question D actually test your knowledge about projectile motion. Yeah, you don't need to calculate or use any fancy formula at all, yeah, as you can see here. Okay, I'll test you um, for E. Where is it? Okay, E, uh, you are asked to calculate its acceleration at maximum height. A at maximum height. What is the value? Yeah, again, we must break, break down for AX and AY. What is the value of AX and AY? Yeah, and again, yeah, I must repeat this over and over again, yeah. Uh, in X, you observe KLP. In Y, you observe KLPP. That means AX equals to? Uh, zero, sir. Yeah, zero. Because in the X axis, we don't have any acceleration. For the Y axis, what is the value of AY then? Maybe 9.8. 9.8, which is? 9.8, sir. Yeah, what? Is equal to 10, sir. Minus 10 or 10, I, I, I. 
yeah, usually we use 10 to simplify calculation. But what is actually uh, 9.8 or, or 10? Where is it? Gravity? Yeah, it's the gravity. Yeah, so it's actually the gravity. Then you will get uh, negative 10 or negative 9.8. Yeah, it's up to you. So the acceleration, uh, you can write it as 0 and 10 meter per second squared. Okay, then we solve the first exercise. Any questions up to this point? Not yet, sir. Not yet. Okay, Lucky. Uh, what about the others? I'll just review it, sir. Yeah, sorry? I think I'll just review it, sir. Oh, okay. Yeah, actually, it's just a review from your high school. <laughs> Yeah, but maybe on the high school, uh, you are given the uh, the expanded formula, but here uh, it's, yeah, as I have demonstrated, you can all always use the basic formula for KLP and KLPP, yeah, and then you can de derive it by yourself. Okay, then, if uh, you don't have any questions, then I will test you once more for the second exercise. Let's say that an airplane flies in a linear motion with a constant speed of 250 meter per second. Then it drops a bump from 2 km high above the ground. So you are asked to, to calculate this. Yeah. When does the bump land on the ground from the moment it was dropped? And uh, we can assume that the bump inherits the initial velocity from the airplane when it is dropped. Uh, I guess I will give you um, five minutes. Can you solve this problem in five minutes? Yeah, please calculate by yourself then. Uh, maybe not five minutes. Uh, um, at 14.15, I will check your answer. Yeah, please try to do it by yourself first. Then. Yeah, for the second problem. Yeah, it's actually not really a parabolic motion. Yeah, it's only a free fall motion. So I have the airplane goes. Uh, let's say over there, the speed is 250. Wait, yo, 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 The velocity is 250 meter per second square, then high above the ground with the height of 2 km, yeah, 2 kilometers, or basically 200, not 200, 2000 meters. It drops a bomb, um, maybe go something like this. Yeah, uh, but here we observe that um, it's only assumed that the bomb inherits the initial velocity from the airplane. Yeah, but the initial velocity from the airplane is only to the x axis. So I get the v0 in the y direction is actually zero. Yeah. Then uh, you simply use, yeah, I, I guess you use h equals to v not y t plus a half of a y or t yeah, in this case t squared. Then you get 2000. Uh, v not y t is 0. Then I have a half of, I'll use negative 10, yeah, and here. For the H, I must use negative as well, yeah, because uh, the direction is actually downward. Yeah, so the H is actually negative 2000. And then I get T squared. I get 5 
negative 5t squared is 2000. I get t squared is 400. And I get t is plus minus 20. And of course, we must use the positive time. Yeah? We are not interested in negative time. Uh, 20 or 20 point, point something yeah, if you use 9.8. Okay, so exercise 2 is done, yeah? Now, this is one challenge for you. Uh, it is taken from the midterm exam for the event semester of um, last two years, I think. Yeah, 2019-2020. Now, we are in uh, academic year 21-22, yeah. Yeah, it's um, roughly one and a half year. So... Uh, during a practice session, a soldier throws a grenade with the initial velocity of 20 meter per second and the angle is 45 degree. Yeah, you only have two questions here. A. How long is the grenade airborne? And then B. A dummy target lies 40 meters from the soldier. If, if the grenade explodes upon impact with a radius of 2 meters, will it hit the target? You must explain it using physics calculation. Yeah, so this is one example of your midterm exam later. You are uh, not only required to use the correct formula and correct calculation, but you must explain. Yeah, as in P. Now, for A first, uh, what should we calculate? Is it T H max or T D max? Um, T D max, sir. T D max, yeah. So you must calculate how long is the grenade airborne. Uh, you calculate T D max, and then for P, uh, what should you calculate first? Yeah, by simple logic, yeah, uh, maybe uh, we forget about the physics calculation first. By uh, simple logic, what should you know to be able to deduct uh, whether or not the cricket, uh, sorry, whether or not the grenade will hit the target? What should you know? Yeah, if you have difficulty, then just throw it. Yeah, if you have, if you can imagine, just throw it. Let's say I have a crown over here, and then uh, let's say I have a soldier here. Yeah, and uh, he throws a grenade. With uh, initial velocity of 20, 20 meter per second, and the throw angle is 45. Yeah, in the meantime, uh, I have a dummy target over here, and the distance between them is. 40 meter. Yeah, how can you say that the grenade hits the target? How we conclude if the grenade hits the target? 
if if what if d max equal to 40 sir mm -hmm. uh, sorry you are talking at the same time uh, gabriel uh the green net will hit the target if the dmax is equal to 40 sir uh -huh, okay but uh, what about kathleen uh yeah the same the same yeah so uh you both argue that uh, when the dmax equals to 40 then it hit the target yeah okay so uh if uh, I must throw a parabolic trajectory here. Yeah, maybe roughly something like this, yeah. Uh, it is not thrown in scale, then if the grenade explodes upon impact with a radius of 2 meters, now there is uh, additional information. Yeah, it will explode with... Um, I don't have any more color <laughs> here. Oh, I, I can actually select another color yeah and then it explodes let's say that this is the explosion with a radius of two meter yeah and that actually means if the dmax lies somewhere between thirty eight and forty two meters yeah, if the Dmax lies somewhere within here, then uh, we can conclude that the grenade hits the target. Okay, then, so, uh, have you already calculated Dmax? From here, uh, we only knew about how long is the grenade airborne. Uh, we know the T for the Dmax, yeah, which is okay. I forgot the formula already. T D Max, T D Max. Where are you? Uh, twice of the H max. Yeah, this one negative two v not y divided by a y. Yeah. Oh, I guess I must. Uh, okay, we calculate the max first equals to the negative v not y over a y uh, is that and two let me check oh negative two v, v not y negative two so uh, we haven't calculated v not y so let's do that here because I know um, sine 45 equals to the cosine 45 then we have V not X equals to the uh, equals to the V not Y which is 20 times uh, a half of square root of 2 yeah, I will leave this square root of 2, then we'll get 10 uh, square root of 2, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because we know the V not Y already, then let's plug in. Negative 2 times 10 square root of 2 divided by... Uh, let's use negative 10, yeah, for this case. Negative 10... Uh, we'll get 2 times square root of 2 second. This is for A. Yeah, you can expand it if you want.
two times uh, sorry two times square root of two square root of two is one point four roughly then uh, the max should be two point eight roughly yeah. Now just calculate the max. Yeah, we can simply use Vx times t d max, which is Vx is uh, 10 square root of 2 times 2 square root of 2. We get 20 times 2, which is 40 meter. Yeah, now, yeah, as you can see here, because the d max is actually 40 meters, yeah, and the dummy target also lies 40 meters, then we can conclude that yeah, does the grenade actually hit the target then? If you get the D max of forty, yeah, the yes, D max forty, then it means that the grenade uh, falls forty meter after the soldier, yeah, which is exactly where the dummy target is. So the conclusion is the grenade hits the target, yeah. Yeah, for I'm sorry. For B, please uh, don't stop. Right uh, when you get the value, yeah. But please uh, deduct. Yeah, uh, please give the reasoning of your answer. Yeah, whether or not it is the target or not. Yeah. Uh, so you can explain it. So the grenade is the target. Then uh, you can explain. Yeah, maybe by using. Uh, this image yeah, or you can continue yeah because uh, the grenade uh, falls 40 meter from uh, the soldier and the dummy target is also 40 meters yeah it's also 40 meters from the soldier so by uh, simple logic then oops sorry not soldier <laughs> yeah so by simple logic then uh, the grenade ah yeah so by simple logic then the grenade hits the dummy target Yeah, so your exam will consist of questions like this. Yeah, the deduction so, question. Mm -hmm. So it's all about physics. There's no coding, so. Uh, yeah, for the midterm exam, it's all about physics. Yeah, in the final exam, or it's actually final project, then uh, you will be uh, tested, or I will be creating your uh, unity skills okay so the mid exam is the only one that using physics and yeah mm. yeah i will discuss for the midterm exam later on, on the seventh week okay up to this point any questions Yeah, I guess no for now. Yeah, if you have any questions, just use the group chat yeah, later. Now, uh, we have finished the projectile motion.
yeah at least from the physics part now for the unity part uh, it's actually a homework for you yeah so using your abilities on klp and klpp please create a program to simulate the projectile motion yeah you are required to do the input uh, only two inputs shooting angle and initial speed then you are required to output three values yeah the initial velocity uh, x and y then maximum height and maximum distance yeah you have one week to do this homework yeah later because we still have uh, roughly one credit to do so uh, you can start doing now yeah and uh, i will be still here until 15 uh, 15 30 yeah if you want to ask something then yeah please do so so this is uh, one example of the layout yeah the input is at the top side of this screen and for the graphics uh, it's up to you yeah you don't really need to use this same graphics uh, i i don't give you the same graphics actually in the classroom yeah you don't have it but you have uh, some example here uh, this one is the executable yeah you can try as you want then create the roughly the same yeah but for the graphics it's up to you you can search on your own and uh, i have some hints here yeah you may use 10 negative 10 for the gravity yeah but if you want to use the default value for the gravity which is negative 9.81 uh, you can use the physics 2d dot gravity field yeah the gravity fields is in factor 2 so uh, you can just access the y component my example uses this default value yeah so the default value for the gravity in unity is 0 uh, in the x-axis and negative 9.81 for the y-axis yeah and then uh, you may also want to display another variables maybe current velocity vx vy then current time the h max dd max and so on yeah but you are not really required to display this in your project yeah the only uh, variables i need you to display is at minimum the initial velocity x and y then maximum height and maximum distance that's all yeah and then for your own personal challenge then uh, you must prove that your simulation is correct yeah after calculating all the values for its max and d max then you can check your simulation yeah uh, you can check does your ball reach the same maximum height as your calculated max height yeah its max and then for the distance does your ball fall back on the ground at the same max distance as your calculated d max yeah but i think for now uh, you don't know yet how to check the collisions between two objects so you can't uh, check the collisions between ball and the ground uh, one workaround is to check the balls by position yeah to check the collision uh, i will teach you on let's say uh, at the momentum yeah um up, up to this point uh, we don't really check the collisions between the ball and the ground so we don't check any collisions between two objects any questions about this homework not yet sir. not yet yeah yeah i think uh, you can start to do this homework if you want yeah so again i will stay here until 15 30 yeah if you want to ask me anything about unity then please do so yeah but if uh, if there isn't any question then yeah i guess that's all for today yeah we'll meet again on next week yeah on the fifth week with yeah um a new topic yeah if you want to do this homework now then uh, you may leave this meet um excuse me sir yeah gabriel uh for the zip in 
classroom i can't download it sir oh uh, you can find it no I, I i can find it but i can't download it oh really uh, let me try it okay then oh i see so you must open it in a new window then yeah you must open it in a new window uh, you can you can just click it then here uh, you you won't get the download button yeah just open in new window okay thank you sir Okay, any other questions, maybe? Not yet, sir. Not yet, yeah? Okay. Uh, if not, then, yeah, I'll see you again next week, yeah?